Business news, good news for you. In fact, if you're a father in France, or a father-to-be anyway, uh, Cole Stangler is looking uh, at France's new paternity leave policy. It's set to be uh, rolled out later today. That's right, Sir. President Macron slated to unveil the measures later this afternoon. It's expected to announce the doubling of paid paternity leave available here in France from two weeks to four weeks. It comes after a government report called for boosting paid time off, and the new measures would take effect next summer. It would also make France one of the most generous countries in Europe in the field. Erin Agunke has the details. The French government's plan to double paternity leave to 28 days is among the most popular reforms in France, with polls showing support from the vast majority of the population. The objective, to encourage new fathers, especially those in more precarious employment situations, to take advantage of paternity leave. Under the current rules, 80% of fathers with permanent work contracts take the time off, compared to less than half of fathers with short-term work contracts. But one major detail that could reduce that gap remains unclear. While officials have said only a portion of the allotted paternity leave will be compulsory, the exact number of mandatory days, which employers must pay for, has yet to be decided. Either way, failure to adapt will come with a cost. Companies that do not respect the obligations could face a fine of 7,500 euros. Set to kick in by July 2021, the change would put France among the countries in the EU with the most generous policies. In Spain, new fathers have up to 12 weeks of paternity leave, compared to up to nine weeks in Finland, five weeks in Portugal, one week in Italy, while Germany has no statutory minimum. A report by a prominent French psychiatrist ordered by the French president had recommended a minimum of nine weeks, though the government ultimately decided doubling paternity leave is already enough of a societal change. Now, next up, the uh, U.S. House of Representatives has approved a bill to temporarily fund the federal government. That's right. The Senate is also expected to give the green light and take the prospects of government shutdown off the table. At the same time, Congress still hasn't approved a new stimulus package, something the head of the Federal Reserve and Treasury Secretary both say would boost the economy. Disagreements over a new Supreme Court justice have weakened the prospects of another bipartisan recovery plan. Let's take a look now at some of the day's trading action. Shares on the CAC 40 starting the day with gains of over 1% here in Paris. As you can see there, same story really on the, on the FTSE and the DAX over in Frankfurt, just ahead of a closely watched Eurozone business survey set to be released within the hour. Now the major Asian indices also trading a little bit lower just around the flat line as you can see there to close out the day over there. Ongoing concerns over the recovery, weighing on gains in Nikkei, just barely in negative territory. All the Hang Seng in the red as well. The Cuspi uh, just in positive territory there. Next up, Tesla CEO Elon Musk addressed shareholders in a much-anticipated event billed as Battery Day. With investors packing the company parking lot to hear him speak. Musk said his company was working on a new generation of electric batteries that will be more powerful and longer-lasting than existing ones. Full production is still about three years away, but it could play a pivotal role in making Tesla cars more affordable to the general public. Musk's goal is to put self-driving cars at a price of $25,000 on the market. Take a listen. In order to do that, um, we've got to get the cost of batteries down. We've got to make, uh, and we've got to be better at manufacturing. It sounds, I think it may sort of sound a bit silly to some people, but it, it, this was, this is like, if for people that really know sales, this is a massive breakthrough. And a must there. Now, meanwhile, here in France, uh, the country's largest energy firm is making some changes. That's right. The company Total is reportedly set to reconvert one of its major refineries. The site in the town of Grand Puy, just outside of Paris, could soon transition to making bioplastics, a product of weakened demand for fuel and a boost in electric and hybrid cars. Unions worry it could put up to a thousand jobs at risk, including subcontractors. But the energy giant says layoffs aren't on the horizon. An official announcement is expected on Thursday. And finally, sportswear brand Nike is rebounding nicely from the pandemic. The firm announced over $10 billion in revenue for the summer quarter. The boost was largely due to online sales, which skyrocketed some 82% during the quarter. Nike CEO John Donahue also said the shift away from brick and mortar stores and towards online shopping could be permanent. He said, quote, the consumer today is digitally grounded and simply will not revert back. Stuart, one of the many changes to look out for as we're seeing the, the world evolve, mm -hmm. change from the, from the coronavirus pandemic.
can't stand online uh, shopping. You know why? Because I'm somebody that sleeps during the day, having got up at three oh. o'clock in the morning, and then <laughs> yeah. the bell rings with the old delivery. But anyway, it's the way of the future, apparently. Carl Stangler with uh, Business News on France 24. Solange is here with the newspapers. 